morning, adventurers! From sunny South Carolina. We are teaming up with Discover South Carolina and we are gonna be spending the weekend traveling all over this great state to taste some of the most delicious and uniquely South Carolinian foods that we can find. We are starting our trip off here in Columbia, also known as the Soda City. Then we're making our way down to the Low Country to try everything this state is known for, from barbecue to biscuits, and of course, tons of fresh seafood. So grab your stretchiest stretch pants, your biggest glass of sweet tea, and let's get to eat. The first stop in our South Carolina journey is the capital city of Columbia. We're here. We have mimosas to start the day. Yeah. Cheers. Yes, <laughs> the best way to start the day. Besides coffee. We found this place called the Spotted Salamander. How charming is this place, you guys? <laughs> it's in like just an old house in the middle of a neighborhood. We were like, are we in the right place? <laughs> but that's probably a good sign. This is pimento cheese, you guys. And you can get it all over the place around these parts. Pimento cheese is super simple. It's just cheddar cheese, and then you have pimentos, which are little red peppers that are super delicious. And then I think just mayonnaise. And I think there are lots of little variations on that, but those are the basic components in the South. So we got it topped on asparagus, which is one of their appetizers here, and they put little cornbread crumbles on it to give it a nice little crunch there. Look at it, that just looks good. <laughs> mm -mm. Ooh, ooh wee. <laughs> that was too much for one bite. <laughs> oh, baby. It's like um, sharp cheese. So it's just so full of flavor. It's so rich and creamy. You have the crunch from the little cornbread guys. Man, this is so good. You can't go wrong with really super fresh, well-cooked asparagus. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's beautiful. As with a lot of foods, pimento cheese, the origin of it, is highly contested where it actually originated from. But I do believe that Colombia is home to one of the oldest recipes. So they have some kind of claim to fame when it comes to pimento cheese. I just real good. Y'all, I'm so excited. We are getting to try a bonus dish today that is not only atypical here, but atypical anywhere along the coast. I'm gonna be trying this little soft shell deep fried crab. So apparently, <laughs> molting season happens about a week during the year, and these crabs travel up the coast, and so you get this like little baby window of time where these soft shell crabs are edible, like the whole thing is edible. It just happens to be this week. This is specifically a female crab or a she crab, I guess. And they're supposed to be super tasty and you can eat the entire thing. I, my brain doesn't want to believe that. <laughs> but this is Nashville hot style crab. I don't really know how to go about it. It's a very intimidating sandwich. I'm gonna try to do it like, like a sandwich. I'll do open face though. It's just a whole crab. Oh god, I dropped pickles. Okay, wait, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> That's how you do it. It's sweet and spicy and crunchy. I don't think I got much of the crab meat in there. I think I mostly got shell, but this is delicious. Mmm. <laughs> mm. There's a crab. So the meat in here is so juicy and tender, and then the outside is so crispy, crunchy, and you can see its shell right here. I don't even know the texture to describe it, almost like a sweet potato skin or something <laughs> yeah, like that. that's about right. It's just nice and buttery. My brain really wants it to be chicken, but it's not, <laughs> it's crab. It's that natural hot sauce. Oh God, it's so Which good. Which is luckily not all that hot. Here. No, it is not. It's, it's kind of like sweet and spicy. Oh, I, I'm digging it. Spotted salamander. Huge success. Now I think we need to go walk off this lunch and explore the city a bit. We decided to take a little trip to the state capitol building, which is right here. And it's actually really glorious, you guys. It's surrounded by this really pretty garden that's just kind of isolated from all the surrounding streets. Oh, it's beautiful. You almost forget you're in the middle of a city. And this building has some history, as you can imagine. It was actually completed in 1907. It took 50 years to build this sucker. Yeah. Also, we read that it is completely fireproof yeah. so that no documents can be destroyed if a fire were to break out. There's actually some little features of this building that I'm trying to find. It's like a little scavenger hunt. So I'm going to see if I can find them and then report back. 
As you walk around the state house, you might notice if you look closely, all these little stars that are just placed around the building, there's like five or 10 of them. What do they represent? During the Civil War, while they were building this, the city was under occupation and the general attacked the building and they hit it with a bunch of cannonballs. <laughs> so I think these spots next to the star actually represent where a cannonball hit during the Civil War. <laughs> That's wild that they left it. Yeah. You can actually go in the state house and just mosey around. Check this out. We're just in the middle of it. This place is super classy. This is Beautiful. like the library so I was just saying, sitting here and sipping some whiskey. Ooh wee. And I That'd said be you nice. probably don't sit much whiskey in here, but it would be very cool. We are all checked into our hotel. Just as you walk in, you guys, they give you a complimentary drink. Beer and, or wine. Yeah, it's not just champagne or something. They have no. they have kegs down there, you guys. Also, they have a rope and I'm so comfy right now. We're staying at the Hotel Trundle, which is just in downtown Columbia. And y'all, earlier we didn't have room for dessert at the Spotted Salamander, but we got it to go. <laughs> this is an oatmeal cream pie and a cowboy cookie. It has coconut, nuts, chocolate chips. I wish you could smell oh, dude. them. Oh it my word. So good. Oh, it smells mm. so good. Mm -hmm. So we're going to snuggle up, eat this in peace, and then we'll be hitting the road tomorrow. We are going to the coast. Yeah, we are. There is still so much more of this state to see. And we are determined to see as much as humanly possible see in this video. It, and mostly eat as much as we can. Yes, that's the main thing. We'll see you tomorrow. Some and delicious time exploring Colombia, but we are hitting the road and we are heading all the way out to the west east coast. <laughs> Idiot! <laughs> we are going to this very picturesque area called Merle's Inlet. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get some delicious food and amazing views. But on the way, we're gonna make a little pit stop at a place that some people claim is some of the best barbecue in the entire country. You know, we love our barbecue. We and now we're gonna do it South so Carolina ready. style, y'all. have made it to Scott's Barbecue. This place is located precisely in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> we literally had to drive down so many back roads and then it just appeared as this like beacon of barbecue goodness on the side of the road. It was opened in 1972, so it's been here for a long time. And just by the look of the place and the smell of the place, something tells me that it is just as authentic now as it was back then. Oh man, I'm so excited. The moment of truth, yes. This is their beautiful, beautiful barbecue, which in South Carolina just means pulled pork. So how do you get to this goodness? Well, here they smoke an entire hog. So they split it hog in half, <laughs> put it on a big old pit, and then they literally mop it with their sauce. With a with, real mop. With a real mop. <laughs> you smoke it, I believe, for 24 hours, and then it's this deliciousness. Oh my gosh, it looks so juicy. And you can see there's a little bit of seasoning. They've got a vinegar-based sauce on there. They're literally sawing bone in the background. <laughs> That's is what that, that sound is. I guess someone's got to do it, right? <laughs> it's super smoky, super tender and juicy. And since they already have some of their sauce on there, it's packed full of flavor. Unlike some pork that might just have the smokiness from the pit. It's got a little bit of everything. A little spicy, a little tangy, a little sweet, a little vinegary. It is just absolutely delicious. The barbecue plate will set you back about $10 and they are cash only, no ATM on site. So make sure you show up with cash. But if you forget like us, luckily there is a bank just a couple miles up the road. It's... They're really going to town in there. <laughs> Here at Scott's Barbecue, they don't have just one barbecue pit. They have an entire smokehouse back there. That's what that is. We also came at the right time because they are unloading all of their whole hogs right now. That truck is full of whole hogs. <laughs> Literally just schlepping them on their backs and taking them into the smokehouse. I think that we're going to see if we can sneak inside and take a little peek. You guys, they can cook 20 hogs at a time. 
I cook it just like this. Check that out. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. That's a lot of barbecue. <laughs> Got a little peek in the back of the house you guys and it is incredible so they have a bunch of wood brought in every single day they have their own splitter and they chop this stuff up and then they hand pick every piece of wood they put them into these big barrels that are slowly cooking all of it down and creating the coals that they then feed into the barbecue pit that's underneath the whole hog <laughs> it is an awesome operation that they got going on down here but boy those things are hot don't get too close to them <laughs> almost might have singed a few hairs there i don't know all right I'm full of barbecue, I'm very happy. We're gonna get back on the road. See more of South Carolina. Lucky room five. Man, a nice little corner room with beach views. Gosh. So this is where we're gonna be staying for the night. Nice. Just to go from a bustling city to like chill at the beach. This is so cool. Got some wine. We're just kind of chilling. Mm -hmm. We are staying at the Sea View Inn, which is, as the name implies, right on the sea. We have a view of it from our window. And awesome. from right here. Yep. Sea views everywhere. But it's a super charming little boutique hotel with these really clean blue rustic wood vibes. Mm -hmm. Definitely our style. There's actually a restaurant that's a few miles away that we're going to be headed to. We're technically on Polly's Island, but we are heading up to Merle's Inlet for mm -hmm. dinner. And uh, spoiler alert, it's going to be a seafood delight. Food has arrived, and this dish is what we are super excited about. This is called a low country boil. This is very similar to a crawfish boil, except instead of crawfish, down here they do shrimp. So it's steamed shrimp with sausage, some new potatoes, and corn on the cob, and it is all tossed in Old Bay seasoning. Also, we ordered fresh oysters, and she just brought them. These are all for me because Eric does not like raw oysters. I'm so excited. You definitely don't get good oysters back home. This dish is called a low country boil because it is from the low country region of South Carolina. You can never be ladylike, I feel like, when you're eating shrimp, right? Just gotta get in there and rip these little guys to pieces. When shrimp is done well, it's just so fresh and crisp. It almost like pops in your mouth. Oh, am I gonna, yeah! <laughs> I feel like you should win a prize every time you get the whole tail out of there. I'm gonna get some of that Old Bay seasoning down in there. I think that's what it really needs. Oh yeah. This is the other dish we wanted to try. This is shrimp and grits, y'all. It's a super simple dish. It's just a bunch of shrimp. We've got some uh, nice sausage in here, some vegetables, some peppers and a bunch of gravy, yeah! And of course the grits. And it's funny, like these are the grits right here, but they look almost like scrambled eggs or something. It's a very interesting grit consistency. Get a bite with some of the gravy, a little bit of meat in there. Gotta get some greenery in there. Okay, this is gonna be too big of a bite as usual. <laughs> Oopsie. But you gotta get everything in there, right? It's actually really good. It's super decadent. The grits are definitely the star for me. They're just so creamy and buttery and rich and delicious. If you come here, get this. I'm very happy with my, this is my dish now. <laughs> you can have the oysters. <laughs> I'm very happy with my oysters, yeah. thank you very Our journey's continuing, you guys. We were back on the road this morning. We headed out uh, southwest, went along the coast a little bit to a little town called Somerville. This is gonna be the last stop on our South Carolina journey. Last All good things must come to an end. That sadly. is true. And it has turned into an absolutely beautiful day. Much warmer today, so we're excited to get out and about. And for our first stop here in Somerville, we are going to be trying a classic Southern dish, maybe one of our favorite dishes ever, and that is biscuits. Oh, not just any biscuits. Not just any biscuits. Vicious.
look at this beautiful biscuit mountain that I got, you guys. This is appropriately called the fat boy. <laughs> so we have this beautiful flaky buttermilk biscuit. I went with the pimento cheese to keep it in the uh, South Carolina theme. And then we have a beautifully fried piece of chicken in between it all. And then they have this um, spicy honey drizzle. So it should be a little bit sweet, a little bit spicy, hopefully. Believe it or not, I did contemplate eating this with my hands, but then quickly deduced that that was a horrible idea. <laughs> Little bit of chicken. Gotta get plenty of that pimento cheese on there. Dude, this biscuit is so fluffy, you guys. Look at that, it's all moist on the inside. Mm, 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 mm. That's one vicious biscuit. <laughs> that was a big bite. Mm. This is easily in top biscuit sandwiches that I've had. And if you guys have been watching our channel for a while, you know that we've eaten a lot of biscuit sandwiches, but it almost doesn't get better than this. The chicken is just perfectly crispy fried. I love the sauce because it's sweet and spicy at the same time as expected. You get this nice burst of cheesiness from this pimento cheese and just look how legit this looks. It's all so homemade. And then of course the star is the biscuit. They're just perfectly golden and moist and just so much buttery flavor. Man, I did a good job. <laughs> Is it my turn to eat now? No, <laughs> I'm eating all the biscuits. My little beauty is the sea biscuit because it's got shrimp on there, get it? But it's fried shrimp with uh, some Thai coleslaw, yum yum sauce, some spicy drizzle, honey drizzle on there, and then cilantro. Mm -hmm. But I figure we're still close enough to the ocean getting in just a tiny bit more seafood. These shrimp are so big. Look at that. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna not be like Eric. I'm gonna make a smaller bite. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna agree with Eric. Definitely top biscuit sandwiches we've ever had. The shrimp is perfectly fried. It's so fresh, it just pops in your mouth. The slaw is a nice little crunch. The buttermilk biscuit, oh my word. So much butter, it's so flaky. It reminds me of how my grandma used to do it. I was wondering how a buttermilk biscuit with Thai flavors was gonna go. Oh, perfectly. It's a beautiful mixture. Holy cow, you guys. That was one of the more satisfying <laughs> meals I've oh, yeah. had. If that doesn't put some meat on your bones, I don't know what will. Yeah. And I don't know that I've ever audibly said, mmm, quite that many times during a meal. No, we don't typically finish meals like that because we just feel like it's so, you know, so calorie intensive. But we both ate every last bite. Yeah. <laughs> they have this funny slogan in there. It says, body by biscuit. <laughs> and I think we have the bodies by oh, biscuit now. I think we did it. <laughs> This turned out to be such a lovely day, oh, yeah. you guys. We've actually just been walking around exploring the town. It's super quaint. They have all these uh, old historic houses and I guess the flowers are in bloom right now. Oh my gosh, the flowers are amazing here in Somerville. There is one last dish that we were dying to try. Well, it's not really a dish. <laughs> it's sweet tea, you guys. <laughs> yeah, sweet tea. Did you guys know Somerville is home of sweet tea? Yeah, it's a, whoa, that is sweet. Is it Holy cow. Apparently unsweet tea is not a popular thing here. You get really dirty looks if you ask for that at a restaurant. <laughs> Believe Whoa. me, we tried earlier and they're like, we don't even have unsweet tea. Like she said, Somerville is considered the birthplace of sweet tea. It's actually the home of the first tea plantations in the USA. But man, this town is obsessed with sweet tea. They have the sweet tea trail, which is just mm -hmm. a trail of a bunch of places you can go to get, I guess, the best sweet tea. Mm -hmm. There is also the world's largest sweet tea, which is just over there. We just checked it out. It's in a huge mason jar and apparently they fit 2,500 gallons in this thing. So they have the world record for the largest jar of sweet, sweet tea, tea ever guess. poured. The jar's there, it's not still filled with yeah. sweet tea though. We also found a place right over there, an ice cream shop that also has these huge tubs of popcorn. I've never seen anything like it. They had low country boil, which is what we ate for dinner <laughs> yeah. the other night. It was so good, we thought Look it can't this. be bad on popcorn, right? I think it's probably just Old Bay seasoning and butter. Oh, holy I just cow. Threw it at myself. That tastes like a pot of fish stew. That's incredible. <laughs> It's actually, actually like really a good. Country boil. Wow. All right. Taking a little South Carolina with us. Yeah, we should go over there and get some more flavors. This is actually really good. <laughs> nice score. But that's going to do it for our trip here in South Carolina. Honestly, I have felt full this entire trip because we've been eating and eating so much. But Lots of snacks off camera too, you guys. Yeah, it's been the glorious kind of full though. Yeah. We haven't had a bad meal yet. 
Like we mentioned, every place that we visited, every restaurant, every town that we went to, that's all gonna be linked in the description below. So mm -hmm. you can recreate some of this if you find yourself in South Carolina, which we can highly recommend. We're gonna finish up our delicious sweet tea. And then I think we're gonna step up to a more adult beverage. I don't know if they do alcoholic sweet tea here. Oh, they for sure do. I've already looked into it. Really? <laughs> all right, well, that's gonna be a great way to end our trip. <laughs> yeah. We'll probably literally have one glass and go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, adventurers. We'll see you back at the RV, I guess. And on the road. Yeah, one day on the road. <laughs> one day. We promise.